So I'm a teacher seven, Mr. Barry here. Today is lesson number seven for the computer literacy course. And today's topics will be covered right here. So I'll have them right there for you. And notice that they have the topic name as well as the time so that you can jump to that particular topic if you want to leapfrog and go to a specific area. And before I introduce the topics, I want to give a good shout out to John and Thank you very much, John. I will be enjoying the coffee. All right. The first topic that we're going to be covering is the Chrome Web Store. Now, the Chrome Web Store comes with every Chromebook. And it's basically, it's an avenue for us to find our applications that we can actually be running. And many of these applications do run offline. And the next topic that we'll be covering is about the Play Store. Now, the Play Store works on the newest of Chromebooks, the ones that have a touchscreen. Now, some people say, well, I just bought my Chromebook and it doesn't have a touchscreen. Does it still play the Play Store? Does it still have the Play Store? And the answer is, well, I was testing it on the 315 and it does have the Play Store. However, many of the applications require you to have a touchscreen in order to use them. And so, yes, you do have the Play Store, but you won't be able to play all of the apps. How do you get all the apps unlocked on your machine? Well, you got to have a touch screen. So that would be something like the CB515. And that's the one that I use. And I'll be using that one here for the, as a display and be working with that one. This lesson, I'm going to start with the Chrome Web Store. So first off, let's find the Web Store. Go to the lower corner and click on the launcher. And you may see it in this list of applications. If you don't see it in the list, you can click on the carrot and it reveals more applications as you see here. Now, for my case, it was the very first one there. So let's go ahead and let's click on that one. And let's talk about what we're seeing here. First off, in the upper left-hand corner, you would see where it says Chrome Web Store. That's the name of the application that we're actually running now. Below that, we have Search the Store. So if you have the title of one of the applications or extensions that you want to use, you may key it in there, or you can actually key in a description of the type of app that you're looking for, and hopefully you'll find it. Next, we have the word extensions. Chrome extensions are small software programs that customize the browsing experience for you. They enable users to tailor Chrome functionality and behavior to individual needs or even preferences. They are built on web technologies such as HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. Next we have themes. Themes allow us to change the backgrounds of our desktop or our browser. Next are apps. Chrome apps can work seamlessly into the desktop and look more like desktop applications than traditional web apps. In fact, these apps can run offline and make the Chromebook extremely useful. Then we have games. Now there are literally millions and millions of different games that you can be adding on to your Chromebook. The next area we see is types. So are we looking for Chrome apps or websites? Below that we have categories. So let's go ahead and click on categories. And we have popular, and then we have popular in the US, business tools, education, entertainment, games, lifestyle, news and weather, productivity, social, communication, and even utilities. Below that I have features. So if I was looking for applications that run offline, we would click that, and right away we notice that the list is refreshed with the apps that run offline. Next we have ratings, where you can choose applications that have the five-star rating, four-star, three-star, or just the two-star ratings. Now what we're gonna do right now is actually look through and find a popular app. So I'm gonna go over here, I already know the name of it. So I'm gonna click up here to where it says search the store and type in the word cut. And then I'm gonna hit the enter key once. From these results, the very first ones are the extensions. And then we have the themes for cut the rope. Now if I keep on going down and haha, now we find the applications for cut the rope. Let's see if I want to add one. So I'll click right here on Add to Chrome. And then we see a pop-up window up here, here, and it'll ask us, do you want to add Cut the Rope? Click on Add the App. 
and it will be installing on your Chromebook as well as into your Google account. So if you were to log into another Chromebook, you would also find the application there. There we go, now it's been added. So now that we've added this Cut the Rope application, let's go down to the App Launcher, click it, and any applications that you've recently added will be found here. And it's the very first app, so I'll click on that one there. And here it starts. I'm going to click on play and start the program here. Now Cut the Rope is a really good tool that shows you or teaches you how to use your mouse. So I've actually used this with senior citizens who have never used the mouse before. So in order to cut the rope, you drag across it. So you hold the left clicker down and you drag across it there and you feed this little creature then click on next so as you can see the challenges have become more difficult so again you're swiping the mouse over that rope and then swipe the last one there and you have that job done now when you're done with the application you can click on the little X here to close it off and it closes it off now if you wanted to go in and uninstall an application it's easy to uninstall applications just click on the three dots which is the customized control Google Chrome and then go down to more tools and then go down to the word extensions once you click there you'll find the apps and extensions that are installed in your Google account you can click up here to where it says search and if I type in the word cut it brings cut the rope if I want to uninstall cut the rope I click on remove and it'll ask me are you sure you want to remove this application click on remove and it's uninstalled so now it's easier than ever to install or uninstall new apps on your google account or your chromebook okay the next thing i want to show you is installing a productivity app such as microsoft office onto your chromebook you can go over here to the launcher again and let's go back into the web store and this time I'm going to be typing in Microsoft Office and hitting that enter key. So here we found Microsoft Office and I've already added it. If I scroll down the list a little bit, we see I also see Microsoft Word. So you can find the Microsoft Suite in the Google environment. And here we see Microsoft Word. Now this version works online only. If I wanted to do things with word processing offline, I would use Google Docs or Google Sheets. Next, let's find the Play Store. Now here it's pinned to my shelf, so I would click it. This is the exact same one that you find on your Android smartphones. And notice that we can do a search here. So if I wanted to look for Microsoft Office, I just type that in, hit enter, and there's the Microsoft Office where I can install this one. So let's click on install. Here it's downloading. There we go. Now it's been successfully installed. Let's click on open. Click on allow on any of the pop up windows that may appear. Log into your office account. Click on sign in. You'll then be greeted with the Word Documents Home where you can find your work that you made in the past or create a new document. Now just to let you know that I do prefer Google Docs over Microsoft Word. There's actually more features now in Google Docs than Microsoft Word ever had and it just keeps on growing. Plus you can edit all of your Microsoft Word documents using nothing but Google Docs and Google Docs works offline. Now if you don't find the Google Play Store by going into the App Launcher and then looking through the list, if you don't see it there, you can add it. Just go down here to the Google Chrome, go to the Customize Control Google Chrome and go down to Settings. Now click on the three lines up in the upper left hand corner of this window where it says Settings and then look for the Google Play Store here. Now if you haven't added it, it will be a button here that says install or add to your Chrome. 
and you'll be able to click it and then install it onto your account that way. And after doing that, you'll have this new link in your settings called the Google Play Store. We have now reached the practice level for lesson number seven. Now in today's lesson, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be learning how to install an app from the web store and we're going to be installing an app called the Webcam Toy as you see here and that'll be kind of fun. Then we'll get to play around it and I get to show you some of the features and we'll be learning how to install it whether we're on a Windows machine or in a Chromebook. After that, we're going to be learning some of the features of Google Hangouts and learn how to make a call right with a Chromebook. And then we'll be using Google Docs to create a product label and a DVD holder. So let's get started with the lesson. If you're working with a Windows machine, to find the web store, go over here to where it says Apps on a new tab. Click on Apps and you'll find the web store right here. Click it. Now on a Windows computer, you won't find the apps, but you still find extensions. So what we're going to do in this one to find the webcam toy is we'll simply type in webcam toy. Then hit the enter key once. And there it is. This is the one here. So we're going to click it. And we're going to click on add to Chrome. So now you get this message that says add the webcam toy. Click on add extension. Now the webcam toy has been added to Chrome and it will actually be found in the top right hand corner. Now let's see how to add an app on the Chromebook. So if you're using a Chromebook, go ahead and click on the app launcher and then find the app called Web Store. Go ahead and click it now and it will open up the Chrome Web Store. Now you'll notice that you do have apps here where we didn't have apps in the Windows computer. So we have extensions, themes, apps, and games. What we're going to do is at the search the store box type in webcam toy and then hit the enter key once and there it is it's the very first one we see go ahead and click it and then click on add to chrome and then click on add extension and you'll have it on your chromebook now the amazing thing is that this app or extension will be installed on all of your other devices that you've logged into. All you gotta do is log into the same Google account. We're now gonna start the webcam app and on a Windows machine, you click on apps and you'll find it there. Go ahead and click it. And now we're gonna talk about what this webcam toy can actually do. All right, it can take your picture. Well. If that's all I could do, I wouldn't really add it. It can do a lot more than that. If you look at some of the features down here, you have first off settings where it can go mirror image, square. And if I do that, then it brings in the corners there, but I'll bring it out. You can do a countdown and I'll turn that off. I'll turn off the flash and let's go full screen. So you can see the action there. And these are the effects. And this is the shutter release right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at more effects. So if we click here, you'll see I have more effects. So you can see like mirror image here, mirror to the left. Try to sit that up there. And then here I am to the right. Top, bottom, quad mirror, upside down switch. So if you had somebody over here, and then you would line up their face with your body and their body with your face so it's called the switch so of course it takes two people to do that and then kaleidoscope and see what's next here we have fragment <laughs> okay quad cam split screen then we have film strip then in the middle here we have ghost so I'm kind of ghosting around there and then we have color ghost now at the bottom we have trail, shuffle, and then tunnel. So you put your face in the tunnel there and looks okay. Let's see what's next here. We have spiral, the twist. There I am twisting around there. Dent, pinch, bulge, <laughs> and then I have fish eye and then wedge, ripple, and then stretch. So if you wanted to go into one of these, like let's go into um, bulge here. There we are, so here I am, bulge. 
<laughs> okay. Oh, I'm forgetting how. Oh man, this is this is real funny here. Okay, and dent. Let's try that out. <laughs> Okay, um, pinch. There we go. Mm, yeah, put your mouth right in the middle, I guess. Mm. <laughs> okay, um, ripple. Let's go ripple here. Mm. <laughs> oh. Okay. Oh man, this is fun. Soft focus. Hazy Days, Vintage, Rose, Retro, Cocoa, X-Ray, Envy, and Zinc. Let's see what else we have here. Citrus, Berry, Mint, Smoke, Halo, Bloom, Glaze, Watercolor, Silk, Old Movie. So here we go. <laughs> We're in an old movie now. <laughs> okay. Cocktail, Spy Cam, Hot Pink. Boca, flare. Ooh, let's see flare. Oh, it's just this one effect in the bottom. Okay, not interactive. Some of these are interactive, which we'll see here. Danger, rainbow. There's true blue. Mono Lomo, comic book. Mono quad, Lomo quad, comic strip, magazine, black and white, cartoon. Okay, so there's cartoon Barry. <laughs> All right, there's outline, uh, sketch, let's see myself in a sketch, and there's cross stitch, and here's underwater, so have some water effects there, <laughs> and then we have fire, so there's fire, there's fire on my hands there, fire everywhere. And this is my favorite, it's called snow. So if you put out your hand, it'll actually, you can grab it. You can see it's collecting on my shoulder so I can wipe it away here, wipe it away from my face. If I'm real still, you can actually, it'll gather up on your clothing and on your hair. There you go, let's move that off. So it actually, it's interactive, which is really, really neat. And to take a picture there, you just hit on, uh, Take a photo and you'll take a picture there. This is disco. Some disco music added there. That's pretty neat. <laughs> okay, we have uh, Sparkle, uh, Glitch, and then we have X ray, LSD, uh, Alien, Night Vision, Thermal, Spectrum, and then we have these Neon, Pop Art. And then pop booth. And then we're back to normal again. Hey, so there you have it. Now you know some of the features that are found in the webcam toy. It is a fun app, as you saw me doing there. And when you click on take a picture, you'll actually save the picture onto your hard drive, but you can also save it into your Google Drive or Google Photos. You can even share it on Facebook and other social media. Well, let's move on to the next topic. And our next topic is Google Hangouts. Now, some school sites will block this communication app. Google Hangouts is an instant messaging and video chat platform that was developed by Google. This wonderful app allows users to call traditional phones, cell phones, and computers. It can even call phone numbers from coast to coast for free. It works by using your computer's built-in microphone and speakers in place of the phone's headset. In many ways, Google Hangouts is similar to Skype, Zoom, and Google Meet in that it allows for video calls. The difference is that Google Hangouts is free and allows you to call up to 10 people at once. So where is Google Hangouts? Google Hangouts is part of the Google Plus social media, which is found on your Google page. So when you open up a new tab, simply look for the app launcher icon and then click it. The Hangouts icon should be found within the resulting menu that you see here. Let me demonstrate. So to find Google Hangouts, click right here on the Google Apps, click it, and then click on Hangouts. It opens up to this window here. Now over on the left-hand side, you'll see your contacts as well as any conversations that you have. 
you actually see the last lines of all the conversations as well as the date and time that they were sent. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on video call and show you how it works. So you click on video call here and then you type in the email address of the person that you want to call and you click it there and you click on invite. There we are. Hello Satomi, how are you doing? That's awesome. Alrighty, well, I'm just showing the class on how Google Hangouts works. Thank you for answering the call. Alrighty, bye-bye. Okay, so it says that she left the call, then I'll click on hang up there, and that's how you do the call. Now, when you wish to do a phone call, click on the middle button that says phone call, and then click on new conversation, and then key in the new number. So you type in the number, hit the enter key, and now it says calling. There you go, and it works. Now if someone would just pick that up. Now I'll hang up here. So now if you want to do a message, go ahead and click on the button that says message. And you can key in a name email address or even a phone number and then begin a conversation that way or continue a conversation that you've had in the past. It's really easy to do. Now you know about a free program that allows you to make video calls, phone calls, and messaging. Our next topic is practice with Google Docs. Making a product label. Number one, start the Chrome browser or Chromebook and log into your Google account if you haven't done so already. Number two, click the apps icon found in the upper right hand corner of the Google web page. Number three, the app screen will load showing the apps that are installed on your account. Number four, click on the drive icon. If you need to pause, you can press the space bar to pause the video. And you can also use the arrow keys. The back arrow key goes back by five seconds and the front arrow key goes up or forward by five seconds. All right. Now we'll be ready for step number five. The Google Drive app should load, as seen here. Number six, locate the projects folder, which is within your main drive area. Number seven, double click your projects folder to open it. Number eight, once your project folder opens, you will see the documents that you have created in the past. Number nine, click on the new button. Number 10, a menu will pop down. Number 11, click on the blue Google Docs icon. If you are asked to create this in a shared folder, click on Create and Share. Number 12, the Google Docs word processor will open with a blank document. Number 13, give this document the name product label project 7 by clicking on the file and then rename you can also rename a document by simply clicking on its name found above the menus number 14 after keying in the new name product label project 7 hit the enter key once number 15 insert a table with only one cell by clicking on insert then table and then going across and just clicking on the very first square as seen here. 16. After clicking on the first square a rectangle will appear in your document and it will look like this. 17. Center the text by clicking on the center align button or by using the keyboard shortcut Control Shift E. 18. The insertion point should be in the center of the page. Number 19. Change the font from Arial to Chewy. If you do not see the font Chewy, it can be found in the More Fonts area. You'll need to select the Chewy font before clicking the OK button 
to add the Chewy to your fonts. Let me demonstrate. Take your mouse and click on the font Arial, then click on more fonts, then click into the search box and type in Chewy. Click on the word Chewy, then click on OK. You now have Chewy as the font. 20. After changing the font to Chewy, change the font size from 11 to 36, as you see here. 21. The assertion point should appear larger. Key in the title, Zhangxing Floating City Cookies, as you see here. 23. After keying in the title, hit the enter key once to move the insertion point down one space. 24. Take your mouse and click on the new tab without closing your document. Step number 25. Key in Jiangxi Floating City in the search box and then hit the enter key once. 26. The Google search results page should load showing different websites and images. 27. Click on the link called Images, as seen here. 28. Images of Jiangxi Floating City should load. 29. Right click the picture that looks like this on my screen. 30. When you right click that image, a context menu should appear. 31. Click on Copy Image. 32. Click on the tab holding your project. 33. Your document should open as you left it. 34. Right click below the title as seen here this will reveal a context menu. Step 35. Click on Paste from the context menu. 36. The image of the Jiangxi floating city should appear below the title. The insertion point should be to the right of the image now. 37. Hit the enter key once to move the insertion point below the image. Now you'll see the flashing insertion point below the image. 38. Take your mouse and change the font from Chewy to Arial by clicking on Chewy and then selecting Arial. 39. After changing the font, change the font size to size 14. You can do that by clicking on the 36 and then clicking on and selecting 14. Step 40. Key in net weight 3.0 ounces, first parentheses, 85 G, last parentheses, dollar sign 1.75. As you see here. Forty-one. Hit the enter key twice to move the insertion point down two spaces. Now key in the text. Ingredients. Oat flour, comma, chocolate, comma, coconut, sugar, comma, honey, comma, molasses comma, baking soda, comma, evaporated cane sugar, comma, vanilla, comma, xylitol, a natural sweetener. Go ahead and key it in just as you see it here on the screen. You can use your voice to type as well. Simply click on tools and then find the tool called voice typing. Click it and then you click it and then you just speak the words and it will type it for you. Now after you key it in, 
it should appear just like this on your product label. You've made the product label. This product is being shared with Mr. Berry since it was created within a shared folder. We're now starting the second project for lesson number seven. Now a word about word art. Google Docs has word art, which is decorative text that you can add to a document. You can make changes to word art, such as the font size and the text color by using the drawing tools options available automatically after you insert or select the word art in the document. Our next project is making a DVD holder. Step number one, open the Google Drive. Step number two, navigate to the project folder if it is not already opened. You will see all the projects that you have created in the past. Number three, click on the new button. Number four, a menu will pop down. Number five, click on the blue Google Docs icon. If you are asked to create this document in a shared folder, then click on Create and Share. Number six, the Google Docs word processor will open with a blank document as seen here. Number seven, give this document the name DVD Holder Project by clicking on File and then Rename. You can also rename the document by simply clicking on its name found above the menus. Number eight, after keying in the new name, hit the enter key once. Number nine, open the page setup window by clicking on file and then going all the way down the menu to the words page setup and clicking it. Number 10, the page setup window should open as seen here. Number 11, change the left and right margins to be 1.6. We're doing this in inches, by the way. Number 12, after changing the left and right margins, click on the blue OK button. 13, you will be sent back to your open document. 14, center the text by clicking on the center align button or by using the keyboard shortcut, Control Shift E. 15. Hit the enter key two times. 16. To insert a word or image in the document, click on the word insert found on the top toolbar. 17. Once you click on insert, a menu will pop down. 18. Click on the word drawing and then new. 19. The drawing window should open in front of your document as seen here. It may take a few seconds to load. Step number 20, click on Actions. A menu should appear. 21, select Word Art by clicking it. 22, a new dialog box should open in the middle of your work. 23, key in the words My DVD Holder into the dialog box. 24. After keying in the title, hit the enter key one time. The word art should appear as seen here. You may change the fill color to any color you wish by using the fill color tool as seen here. Step number 25. Once you've changed the color, go ahead and click on the blue save and close button. Step number 26, you will be sent back to your document. You will see the word art image. Resize the word art image to about half its size. After making the word art image smaller, click outside of the image to unselect it and then hit the enter key once. 27, the insertion point should be below the word art image. Insert a table with only one cell by clicking on Insert and then going down to Table and then going across and clicking on the very first square as seen here. 28. After clicking on the first square, a rectangle will appear within the document. 29. 
center the text by clicking on the center align button or by using the shortcut Control shift e 30. The insertion point should be in the center of your work. 31. Hit the enter key 14 times to lower the insertion point to the middle of the page. 32. Click below the table. Now your insertion point should be flashing below the little table that you've just increased in size. Step number 33. Hit the enter key eight more times to lower the insertion point eight more spaces below this table. 34. Click on the word insert found on the top menu. 35. Once you clicked on insert, a menu will pull, be pulled down. 36. Click on the word drawing and then click on new. 37. The drawing window should open in front of your document. It may take a few seconds to load. 38. Click on actions. 39. Select Word Art by clicking it. 40. A new dialog box should open. 41. Key in your name, I'll key in Daniel Berry, into the dialog box. 42. After keying in your name, hit the enter key one time. The Word Art should appear as seen here. 43. Take your mouse and hold it over and on top of the blue circle that appears above the image. Now drag it down and let go of the mouse when it says 180 degrees as seen here. Step 44. Your name should now appear upside down. 45. Click on the can of paint which is found near the top of the drawing window. If you don't see it Click on your name again and it should appear. 46. Now change the fill color of your name by selecting any color that you like. 47. Click on the blue Save and Close button. 48. You will be sent back to your document and you will see the word art image. 49. Resize the word art image of your name by dragging any of the corner squares to the center of the image. The image needs to be about two inches across. You may use the ruler found above the document to help you gauge your progress. I'll give you a few moments there to resize it. Step 50. After resizing the word art image, it will appear much smaller than before, as seen here. Now you may print the document if you like by pressing Ctrl and P, or by clicking on the print button. Printing this project is totally optional and up to you, but if you do, you would fold it along the left and right margins and then fold it in half as seen in this diagram. Congratulations, you've completed the DVD holder. Well done. In this lesson, we've covered a number of free apps from the Google Web and Play Stores. We've looked at the Webcam Toy App, Google Hangouts, Google Docs Word Art, inserting a table, copy and paste, using Google Docs to create a product labels, and even DVD holders. We're now going to be going into the review questions for lesson number seven. These questions will be reviewing material from lesson one to lesson seven. If you are taking this class for credit, please take a clean sheet of paper and write your name along the top line. After answering the questions found on the next page, turn the paper in to Mr. Berry or email the answers to Mr. Berry. Question number one. What is the name of this icon?
Question number two. What is the name of this icon? Question number three. What is the name of this icon? Question number four. What is the name of the tool that allows us to change the page margins and layout within a Google Doc? Question number five. What is the keyboard shortcut to align the text and images to the left side in a document? Question number six. What is the keyboard shortcut to highlight all? Question number seven. Where is the columns tool found? Question number eight. If you do not see the ruler, what do you click on to make it viewable? Question number nine. Under which menu is the voice typing tool found in? And question number 10. How to make a Google Doc landscape. Wow, we made it through lesson number seven. Can you believe it? We've created two different projects. We've gone through a number of different applications. We've done a lot of different things today. Hey, if you like these types of videos, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, please subscribe to the channel and get other videos on technology and other topics. I also wanted to say, I wanted to thank everyone for your wonderful comments and everything else that you've done. Thank you very much. You have a wonderful day. Bye bye. One more answer a question that's been up there on my YouTube channel for years. <laughs> Why do I have so many tabs up? Well, the tabs I have up there are from conversations that I have with my subscribers and others that I'm doing research on fixing their computers that are having problems for them. So if you look, you have on the top left I have groups those are actually ongoing conversations I'm having with people on fixing their problems and the other tabs such as you see on the right hand side where you have reddit and all the others those are the research for fixing those problems so I also have tabs open for my research in my work creating computer lessons so there you go now you know why I have so many tabs up thank you all for the very good questions and have a very good day